Um, I think um, what we did was yesterday was a great start to you know what we want to do and the direction that we want to go into for the rest of the year. Um, obviously, you know the way we started, you know last week wasn't the way we wanted to, but um, the work we put in it showed on Sunday. No explosive plays yesterday after that had been a problem for mm-hmm. the first three weeks of the season. What was the key to kind of tying up those loose ends? Um, I mean, if you give up big plays, you're going to give up points. Um, I mean, that was shown in against the Saints. That was shown against the Browns. Um, and then it, when, you, when you don't give up good plays, they won't score points. That's going to help us out. But we just did a good job of, I think, just elimin- eliminating um, Chase as much as we could. Obviously, you know, he's a great receiver. It's hard to do. But I think we did a good job of just taking away some weapons. Michael always says it's about the players. Mm-hmm. But, but to what degree from, from the players' side, um, it's success like that, at least in part, about, about the plan. Um, yeah, it's about the plan as well. I mean, it's 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 a two-ended stick. Like you got to be able to, you know, take the game plan and also play it to the best of your abilities. Um, and that comes with great coaching that puts us in the right position to so that we can be successful on the field. How big was that plan? It was a great plan. I mean, that's that's the main plan. The, all the keys that we needed um, to win the game, we hit on defense. Um, I mean, that's how the league is. Um, it's going to be a grind. It's it's going to be a long run. It's not going to happen over a couple of weeks where it's not like college where you can just go in and blow out every team. Um, every week's going to be a challenge, um, and then we got a, a good one this week. Whatever problems you guys have had right out of the gate, mm-hmm. I mean, you still have to feel pretty good about the position you're in, regardless of what's happening. Definitely. Um, uh, like you said, we got to be. We, we feel really good where we're at. Um, it could have obviously want it to be better, but. You know, the best thing we can do is just win the game that we have at hand. What does consistency look like to you, you know, for this football team? Um, going out, knowing what to do and playing fast and aggressive. Um, the times that we go out there on all three levels and guys are timid, guys are questioning, um, just kind of second guessing, that's that's not what we want. We want guys just to go out there and play football. Like, I mean, just for an example from yesterday, Tajay drops the ball on a, on a toss from Ryan. He doesn't panic. He picks it up, goes, gains yards. Ryan blocks for him. That's like backyard football. You know what I mean? The, like, like that's what happens, or that's what Rabel means when the players have to make plays. That's that's the instance right there. Last week, you guys talked about early in the week that you know what happened because it didn't matter. It's just on to the next game, so on. Yep. How's that approach after you play well then? Same same approach. You know, we got to do it again. You know, how good do we want to be? Um, how great do we want to be on defense? It's going to be a week week a week to week thing. No, it just comes from, you know, guys just caring about what they do and not wanting to make a mistake. And that's that's literally all it is. Like guys aren't going out here trying to, you know, make errors or have mistakes, but they also don't want to be too aggressive. But there's a, there's a fine line, you know what I mean? That's but that just comes from experience that comes from being out there and, and playing on the on the field. You guys haven't faced a quarterback, even though Richardson's a rookie, you haven't faced a quarterback like him, mm-hmm. his style of play yet this year. What kind of problems can he present with his size and athleticism combination um being able to extend plays i mean that's definitely going to be tough on the back end um makes us as as the dbs have to cover longer guys can are able to you know get open but he's a he's a good quarterback um we'll see what he has um this week what's the challenge of making sure that you have the same type of effort when you go back on the road this weekend? Um, we got we to gotta go as a team. Um, we got to go out there and believe in ourselves, believe in, in our practice and our preparation throughout the whole week um, and understand our keys and our objectives to win, and we'll be successful. You think you can have one early, I guess, right, right out of the gate, you almost had a pick there. What, what was it? Might be a read on that play and, and – you beat yourself up for not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever the ball hits my hands, you know, I, I, for me, I gotta, I gotta be able to catch that. Um, but it was just short. You no know, ball was on probably the seven, eight yard line. Um, I ended up becoming a free player, and then I was just reading the eyes of, of Joe Burrow, and I kind of got a little too far in front of it a little bit. But I gotta catch those still. How important was that stop there to force pull them to a field goal? It seemed like they were rolling early, and then you yep. guys obviously stopped them after that. Yeah, very important. Um, that's a key for us is to you know get the drive stopped no matter what, um, even if it's not looking too good. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't want touchdowns, and they got down to the red zone, and uh, we did a good job of just holding them to a field goal. After the game yesterday, um, Derek called Jeffrey the heart and soul of this football team. I mean, we we thought of Derek as being that guy for a yeah. long time. 
has, has Jeffrey kind of taken over that mantle with this group? Um, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that that's going to get everyone riled up and get ready for the game. I mean, he's he's not just a, a riled up, rah-rah guy. He's a leader as well. He cares about the team. Um, he knows the rules. He knows what's what's going to make us successful, and he's, he applies that to, to, the, squ to the squad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any play like that, when I'm out in space, I love that because like, I'm athletic. So whenever I can pull around, get somewhere, release on the linebacker, DB in open space, I like those plays. How many of those do you think there were? Mm, I think we had about three or four of them. Yeah, we had about three or four plays I had pulled up out of there. Aaron, you guys have talked about, about success on early down, staying ahead of the chains. Other than just saying it's a beautiful, what allowed you to have success on the early down? Oh, uh, it's just everybody on their job. Like everybody was winning one on ones. Everybody's out there playing fast, flying around, and just being aggressive. And so when everybody win their one on ones, I gonna have positive results. You look at positive results, right? The way that you guys were able to play yesterday, did you have any early indications throughout the week that that was the type of result that you were gonna have? Mm, I feel like that's always the goal. Like going into the week, like have you prepping like. You don't never go into a game like with a game plan and think like, oh, this is not gonna work. So whatever game plan you have, like you think is gonna be successful and like you're gonna execute it the way it's drawn up. So go ahead. No, you good. Thanks. How, how much a game like yesterday helped kind of build confidence in the room, especially coming off a game where the you know team across the board had had struggles, I guess, the week before. Oh, uh, that was a big time win. Then we back at home too. Like just to come out there and dominate the Bengals like that, like in all phases, from offense, special teams, defense, like that's a big time confidence builder. What do you think it's going to take to stack games like what you did yesterday and just stack that and roll that into further games to be more consistent? Yeah, I was just say like, seeing what we did that day, like, like making your games off the positive things you did. So like you seeing what worked. So like whatever you were doing, like stay in that mode and just keep enhancing whatever you were doing that was working. That's how I feel about it. Dismiss it when we ask him questions about the game plan and the play calls. It says it's all about the players. Mm -hmm. Understanding that from the player's side, how much does the plan and the play call help set you guys up to, to execute? Uh, it, it's big, but at the same time, I don't know if you heard it for like, you can draw up plays, but it's going to be the players that bring it to life. So, like, you can draw up any play, and if everybody was to dominate the person across them, it'll work. So that like, that's a true statement. Like it's all about the players bringing the plays to life. It's back in the building, and what do you, what do you tell him as he kind of works his way back into to football shape and being ready to go himself? Um, I feel like he's been locked in this whole time. Like even if he like when he's away, like he knows he's coming back. So he got to stay ready for when that time comes. And it was cool. Like he got short time a little bit, but I feel like he's been locked in. He's been focused and just. Staying ready for whatever comes. What do you think his presence can mean for the room? Um, he's been around, so like we've been the means, we, like we've been practicing together, or whatever. So it's the same presence. Like to be honest, I feel like it's still the same energy, same standard. We don't go. You know, you got, the line performance yesterday was that a breakthrough in some ways, or go back to just what you said earlier about every guy winning their battle? Yeah, uh, every guy winning their battle. We just working together because like we're a unit. So I feel like we always, we've been knowing like what we capable of, but it's always been probably there's just like one slip up or one person here or one person there or just it's not being good enough. So it just was clicking on all cylinders. How's Dylan done since he's moved into the lineup? This is really the first extended playing time he's gotten since he's been here. <clears throat> how's he done and how's that kind of helped his confidence? No, uh, he's been doing good. You know, Dylan, he got in a couple games last year, like came in as a starter, like since he's been here. So. I feel like wherever you put Dylan, he gonna thrive and he gonna hold up to that stand, like give it all he got every time. I know you guys um, try to tune everything out, but there's some guys under the gun last week, you know, after after last week's game. Did, did you learn something about the guys in your room with how they responded this week? Um, Yeah, like I feel like with like an athlete itself, like you can't be down on yourself for too long, like no matter what happens. So like just you yourself and then us around anybody like who had like a bad game or they just down about something like you got to pick each other up and just put everybody on your back so like they can keep going like sometimes people don't got like the energy 
or just a mindset to just fight through problems like that. So, like, just us being a unit, helping each other out and just carrying each other along, like, along the way. And Coach Sprayle yesterday talked a lot about how last week you guys just all just came to work after a bad game. Like, you, you guys got better basically Monday through Saturday. Did, I mean, do you see that in the course of a week, even in the middle of the season, that you can get better during the week? Absolutely. You can get better. Like, it's, it's an everyday thing. Like, it's the NFL. Like, you never know what's going to happen every Sunday. Like, we all have seen it before. But just taking it one day at a time and, like, being intentional with whatever you're doing, like every drill, every rep, like in meetings, how you take notes, how you study, like just being intentional with everything you got going after you do fail. Or even when you succeed, like it's the same thing, like growing off your your failures. Did you say you talked about how much better the O-line clicked in, in this game. You reset the bar for the group playing like that now that, that you can't do what you did in Cleveland or the earlier game? Mm, no, I ain't resetting the ball. It's trying to get to that ball. Like, we had a good game this past Sunday, but, like, the ball is still set at the top. Like, we're trying to be the best. So, we still got some more work to do. How do you how do you view momentum? Whereas, like, do you feel that's something that carries from week to week, or do you feel it's something you build throughout the week? How do you look at it? I see – you build momentum throughout the week. Like, yeah, you had that game you win, like, that past Sunday. But after you win that, like, me personally, like, it's just a reset. Like, it's a whole new week, whole new, whole new opponent. So, it's just building that momentum every day. Like, kind of you got a good practice. Oh, that's a little – you're a little more confident in what you're going to do. Come out there the next day, you're doing the same thing, clicking on all cylinders, some more momentum. And then you get it all the way up to Saturday and Sunday and just rolling. It's a 500 league, and here, here you sit the entire division's 500. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Nah, it is for sure crazy. Hey, that's why I say, hey, the league is it's crazy. You never know what's going to happen, man. Just one thing you know about the Colts is you're going to see each time you, you play them without even getting into watching tape too much. Yeah, I know they got a solid defense, and I know they some penetrating. They're going to fly around. They play hard. Makes his living blocking. How, how would you rate your quarterback's attempt at blocking on the Tajay Spears run? <laughs> uh, I think that was solid. You know, we can't blindside no more. So I feel like if it was back in the day, I feel like Tanner probably would have took him off his feet. I'm like now, nah, you know, you just got to get in the way. So that was a great block. <laughs> Technique wise? Yeah. It, it, hey, he got the job done. Is Big Jeff welcome up front with you guys anytime? <laughs> you say you're taking him on that uh, little goal line play, huh? Yeah, nah, Jeff can come over there. As long as he's going to hit somebody in the mouth, he's good. We asked yesterday about that play. He was 100% confident that it was going to work. Were you in that same mindset? Oh, yeah, I'm 100% confident at every play. What's the story on Oak Cliff here? Oak Cliff? Oh, this in the city, man. You know, where my family and everybody was raised. So, just like all the area codes and everything. And so, like, really, this hoodie right here, one of my uh, guys, his name uh, Taylor. He from Dallas as well, uh, Taylor Torrance. And so, like, it's like an organization called Four Cliff. And so, like, they just look out for the community. They got a whole little, like, center day, take care of people education-wise, giving back to the community and all little bug. Aaron, you guys scored 27 again yesterday. You know, your two games on the road, you haven't gotten to the end zone yet. What's the challenge of taking the same effort and, and execution you had yesterday at home to the road this weekend? Um, just dialing in, just – Change just like it's just another it's another game and trying to be the best we can be. Well, all these things to clean up. I thought we, uh, you know, our specialists, you know, starting there. I thought, you know, a huge kick there from Nick, you know, fifty-three yarder. Uh, we punted well. You know, the opportunities that we had. You know, kind of seeing there what Stoney is able to do with some of the different kicks and being able to put him inside the the twenty or inside the ten. You know, those are always huge. Looking at field position, um, you know, offensively, it was, you know, just about getting into the drive and being able to be efficient, uh, not put ourselves in, uh, you know, third and long. You know, we had a good day on third down, and mostly that was because of, uh, you know, they're all third, a lot of third manageables. You know, we had a couple third and longs, which, you know, obviously didn't go our way. Um, so that was great. We converted those drives into touchdowns, been able to, to do – what we need to do in the red zone. Uh, defensively, it came down to, you know, just not having those X play passes that we had seen in, in some of those games. 
What's Kinsey done in terms of punt returns? That in 12 and a half yards. It's pretty good. Yeah, you know, and that's that's a that's a you know not only Mace, but that's a testament to to those those guys on that unit. You know, you got to take care of the Gunners. Um, had a really nice play there, a big return. Had the good return. Uh, had the penalty. You know, really gave us some some great field position uh, there at the uh, second quarter. So, you know, probably would want him to, to fair catch the one. You know, being smart there. Um, you know, Chris Moore made a play as a gunner. You know, knocked the football out there. Uh, so yeah, Mace Mace has done a nice job. Do you envision maybe sticking with him when when Kyle comes back? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where Kyle's at. Um, you know, we got forty eight guys going to the game. You know, how many guys we can take? Equipped to, to be plugged in in a week now, and what's your philosophy on on an incumbent coming back when his replacement's done well? Yeah, I you know I think that that's um, you know Nick's been away for a little bit. He was with us in training camp. You know we'll see where where things you know go. You know like the way that Chris is is playing over there. Um, you know we'll just see how he looks this week. In the quarters, <clears throat> one quarter in, how, how do you feel about where you Which way you slice that 17th game, Corey? Who gets that piece of the, that's of the pie? That's, that, that's a little sweetener? Yeah. Um, you know, we just got to just be more consistent. You know, we need to get on the road and, and, and be able to go win on the road in the division. It's going to be a huge, uh, huge test. Um, you know, so that's where our focus is. And, you know, trying to execute the keys each week and you know, take care of the difference in taking care of the football and, you know, being able to get off the field on third down, all these things affect the quarterback. You mentioned that being more consistent. What, what, what does that look like? Is that something you accumulate through the week or do you well, ever I think carry that's, over? It, I think that the response has to be consistent. You know what I mean? Whether it's a good play, a bad play, you know, second and 10 doesn't have to lead to third and 12, right? And so um, – Talking about just the consistency of, you know, our, our effort and our understanding of the concept. And, you know, maybe they made a play, right? You know, we have to uh, just continue to string some positive plays together, let them build off each other, you know, hit some passes, hit a run, hit a keeper, hit a play pass, hit a shot, you know. Eliminate the, the self-inflicted wounds. I know you believe momentum, like you build it throughout the week, but is there anything to like taking a, a win like yesterday, rolling it into the next game and just stack? Because it's been a bit since you guys have been able to stack a couple wins together. Um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't see that as being something that really happens. When you say, well, we, we did this last week against the, the Bengals and we'll – if that was the case, how would we have done against the Browns if we just carried that over? You know what I mean? It was like – but I think you can show them what, they're, what everybody's capable of when we all you know, do our job and, and we get going. Uh, and I think a lot of that is, is attributed to how, what you do in practice, you know, just the understanding of you know, the looks you saw in practice and the ones that you don't see. You know, you can't show them everything, right? There's going to be some things that you're not going to be able to see in practice. But just having an understanding enough of the play to be able to to execute it off of a look that that you haven't seen, or being instinctive enough to to be able to execute it. We saw more mobility from from Ryan. Is, is that something that you can build on? You think? Mm, yeah, I mean, I think we can. You know, we've used Ryan in and out of the pocket in different times, and you know whether he keeps it or you know. Got rid of the football and down there in a red zone with, with pressure, and Nick was able to score. And you know, we'll have to change the launch spot for the quarterback. At, you know, plenty of times this year. Are those few plays where where Aaron pulled and kind of protected on the backside of, of the rollout is that uncommon for a center to 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 be used like that? And how? Uh, well, it based on you know what type of center, you know that's, you know. Just to, just looking for a way to, to, to change the launch spot for the quarterback. And, you know, depending on who's covered and who's uncovered, whether it's the guard that's coming back to, to protect or, you know, whether you use a tight end. What's the uh, next rush field going to be 
Is this to be successful when he's gotten opportunities? And how'd you like his effort in getting in the end zone on that? Well, I thought it was a great effort to, to get into the end zone. Uh, he looked determined. Um, I, uh, you know, Nick's worked hard. You know, Nick's worked hard to, to know a lot of different spots, played a lot, plays a role on special teams. Um, you know, kind of just keep showing up, whether that's uh, on, a, on a catch or on a huge block. Uh, had, a, had a nice block on Derek's, you know, touchdown run there, so. Have you seen Wiley kind of grow since he's gotten here and just what's allowed him to have the kind of role he had yesterday? Well, he, you know, again, can play at the line of scrimmage. He plays in the backfield. He can handle multiple spots. He's done well in the kicking game. Been able to step in there. Stepped in there without a whole lot of reps in Cleveland. Um, he's got a good catch radius. You know, I thought the Ryan executed that pass there to him in uh, the high red area. It was you know, good for us to get down the seam. Um, you know. I like kind of where his attitude is. He's willing and, you know, just continue to improve. He just did, he did a better job of winning one-on-one -on -one battles last week and doing it more collectively. When you saw on film how that offensive line worked, did, uh, were you happy with that improvement there? Yeah, I mean, there were some good finishes. I mean, again, when we took the ball at the end there and were able to, to run the football and have the clock and run the clock out uh, when they knew we were going to run, I thought that was a, a good ending uh, to uh, efficient day on offense, you know, it could go eight, one of two ways, right? Three plays and and punt, and they have to go back there and you know play defense. Probably, you know, gonna gonna win the football game, but you're gonna have to go and rush and and cover them. And you know, we want to end the, the the game you know, with the football, and we did that. Uh, I thought we protected better. Thought there were a few um, lapses. You know, I thought, you know, they got us on the one third down with the TE with the game over there. Um, Brew trying to probably do a little bit too much. You know, it was kind of working to the left side and, you know, came back over to help. And, you know, Dylan was going to work back out and kind of gave up a cheap one there. So as long as we just all do our job, I think winning one on one in this league uh, will always be something that'll be beneficial uh, for us if we can do that in all three phases. Being about the players mm -hmm. and, and the execution of the players, I was hoping you could expand on that. That the, the the plan and the calls obviously, to some degree, put the players in the position to execute. So, to what degree do you think that the the plan and the calls influence the ability to execute? Again, the play comes in. You know, the eleven guys out on the field are the ones that that make it go whether they're on the same page, uh, whether they're executing a call or they're on the same page, that's the most important thing is a guy being able to communicate, whether we call man coverage and you got op you know, opportunity to get picked and guys are communicating and they try to pick you and they don't get picked, it's an incompletion and they punt. I mean, it's about just trying to give them the opportunity to, to know and have confidence in in the in the call and the play, and then then go execute. And you know, but. you think play? You think sorry, Terry? You think the the from the outside perspective? I think there's good the plays play that don't work, and I think there's bad plays that work. I, I I don't know what to tell you. There's you know, I, it's just the whole guru mentality. I think that that it gets executed, um, whether you think it's a good call or a bad call. You know, you'll know by way the players execute it. How, how much are you liking what you're seeing from Aziz and Jack uh, manning that, those inside linebacker spots? And it was yesterday their the best game they've had so far? This yeah, I don't know if it was the best game. I thought they were, you know, efficient. I thought they both made some plays. I thought they uh, – Aziz, I thought you noticed his, his speed and effort, uh, violence to the football. You know, I thought he was running. I thought Jack was an efficient tackler. I go river. Remember myself calling him Jack, by the way. That Dr. Gibby, uh, you know, got his hand on a football. We talked about that, those interior throws. You know, they need to fit some runs better. I think that they can blitz better. Um, tried Doc down the middle, uh, going fast on third and three. He was able to be there. So, again, it was, you know, we'll have to, you know, keep, keep doing that and, and keep improving this week. 
play off each other and work in tandem like that, playing those inside spots? Well, there's some times where guys will, you know, you'll fit a gap and a guy will have to overlap. And whether that's at the player in front of you, you know, seeing where the D lineman is um, and, and working off of him. Sometimes they, they work off of each other. Um, communication and coverage is, is critical. Richardson make when you during the pre-draft process a little bit maybe well, a great visit with him you know I mean very um, engaging um, individual enjoyed it enjoyed the time you know our, our conversations and spent a whole day here and and did a fantastic job and he'll you know he's a he's a big physical fast um, quarterback that that's going to be uh, a huge challenge this week Well, being able to communicate either visually um, or with hand signals, right? Talking to the guy next to you, being able to to use some sort of cadence that doesn't allow them just to tee off on you, our ability to to get off on the football and be legal and not you know false start or be late. Um, those are some places where you'll need to start. After the game yesterday, uh, Garrett called Jeffrey the, the heart and soul of this football team. When, when Jeffrey was drafted, did you look at him and think, this guy's going to be the heart of our team, be the heartbeat of this thing? Well, it's, I mean, we, we certainly appreciate what he does and everything that he's about. And uh, his effort, his, his demeanor, his attitude, his willingness to execute uh, the game plan and understand what we're trying to get done. He's very coachable. Very, very, very coachable. And so, you know, just that's kind of the person that we thought we were getting. Certainly a great player and, you know, huge, huge part of our, our team. It'll take some time to get him back up to speed, but getting Nicholas back early, how pleasant of a surprise is that for you? And how nice will it be to have him back on a practice field and getting more involved with things this week? Yeah, we haven't seen him, you know. For a while since training camp, so the league made a decision on what they felt like um, they wanted to do, and so we'll we'll hopefully get an exemption for him and practice him and see where he's at uh, as we work closer to the game. Was it fair to him that they change rules on the fly? I mean, that's the league does what they want to do. How's Peter been progressing? Good, good. You know, feeling better and stronger. So hopefully, have him at practice this week and see how he does. What did you think of the P.I. on McCreary? And isn't most of the contact there within five yards? Yeah, I probably missed that one. I don't I mean, they, you know, I like how we responded defensively. You know, we went one week. It was, you know, everybody throwing their arms up and complain. You know what I mean? It's like continue to work on our responses, uh, which I thought we did. You know, and it was, I'm, I'm sure they, they'd like to have that call back. That, you know, probably one that they, would like to have back. In terms of your line, they performed much better yesterday. Are you sitting here feeling pretty good about where they are right now? Or when you have a guy like Scrimsy coming back and be after the mix, does it open up some doors to look at possibilities of maybe some changes? Or just yeah, sure, we could change. You know, I mean, I think if you have a coach, you never feel great about anything. At least I don't. You know, I mean, we get back to work, and it's a huge test. And I guess that's the attitude of a coach. I don't know. Yesterday. Sucks, Jerome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a day like yesterday where you are eliminating those X plays defensively, is there something you're seeing or maybe not seeing that's the common trend? Well, I think some of the coverage dictate that, you know, some of the coverage, right? So, you know, split safeties and guys, you know, probably some of the coverage dictated that, you know, some of the pass rush dictated that. You know, they trying down the middle of the field and Gibby was there and close and but I you know I felt like there were some good combined rushes and coverage and you know we tackled there wasn't like a catch and run that got loose and you know could have you know what I mean right down the sidelines I think we need to leverage that ball better but you know that has a lot to do with it too Big play he'll play way. more. Yeah, he'll play more. What, what's he done? How's he kind of gotten better? Since Good. Well, I mean, learn what system, learn the calls, and the, what we're doing, and you know. So it was great to see him and 
you know, he'd been working extremely hard, and I know he wished that he, you know, was out there. But you know, what he did was take advantage of the opportunity that he got and earns more opportunity. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. Yeah.